What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to another episode of Ben Builds with Joe. We are back on the lag three, and today we are focusing on finishing up the cockpit, getting that fuselage glued together so that we can move on next episode with the wings, the nose cone, all that great stuff. So we're going to jump right on in, guys, waste no time whatsoever, and we're going to start on the cockpit instrument panel. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the decal as a backing. I'm going to drill out all of the individual gauges, and then we're going to paint it up and get that looking sharp. So let's go ahead and queue up that time lapse, jump right on in, use our pin vise, our X-Acto knives, drill out all those gauge clusters, and get this thing painted. So we have everything painted. We went ahead and took the liberty of also painting the bulkhead right behind the pilot seat in that same light gray color. Now, most of our references that I've looked at show that the instrument panel and the metal parts would have been painted a different color than the sidewalls. I went ahead and went with the silver on the sidewalls, and we went with the light gray on the different metal parts, like the bulkhead, the seat, the armor plate, and then the instrument panel. So all of that is nicely done. We're going to go ahead and shift over, do a little bit of detail painting here on the radio that sits right behind the bulkhead. Now the radio itself is just held down by a single strap. So all I want to do, because you're not really going to be able to see a lot of it, I just want to go ahead and paint that strap silver. Then I can also weather it down and we can get it looking decent. So just a little bit of our Vallejo aluminum color and a fine brush. We're just going to go ahead and barely touch that actual strap and give it a nice silver color. It's not really that big of a deal to be honest because you're not going to see a whole lot of it. The side windows are so small and it's still dark in there, you're really not going to see much of anything. But at least I'll know it's there, and if anyone does shine a flashlight in there for some odd reason, it'll have some detail. Now, I could go full out and put in wires and all that stuff, but I don't want to fool with that. You're not going to see it. So let's just go ahead and paint this up and get this thing a little bit more detailed. Now, while we have the silver still out here in our paint dish, let's go ahead and paint the rear wheel well for that tail wheel. I'm just going to paint it silver, nothing too fancy. I'm not sure if it would be silver or if it would be like a wood aralac type color, but I think I'm good with silver. You're not really going to see much in there anyway, so we're going to paint both sides with Vallejo aluminum color, and then we'll be able to paint the actual gear itself, and then we'll glue it in. So nothing too fancy here, just a couple of quick brush strokes, and we're looking decent. We aren't going to do any weathering either in here because you're not going to see it, so we'll just move on with the next area. So moving right along here, guys, let's go ahead and shift our attention over to assembly here on the cockpit floor. So you can see we just have one plate. We do have a seat, some armor plating, and a bulkhead, as well as the instrument panel, and of course, the flight control stick and rudder pedals. So let's go ahead and jump in here, queue up another time lapse, and let's assemble the majority of this area here in the cockpit. Let's get everything hooked on, get everything glued in, get everything painted, so we can start installing everything up into the fuselage and get this thing closed up.
with all of our parts nicely glued together, we have moved over to the instrument panel once again. The paint is dry, so I'm just using my circular jeweler file to go ahead and round out the openings that I drilled out before. And I want to also make sure that they're clean and there's no paint in there obscuring your view to that gauge behind it. So real simple, very quick, just a couple of turns, nothing too fancy. Make sure that the paint is all nicely cleared out. And I think we're ready to go ahead and mount that decal to the back. Now for glue, we're just gonna use some Elmer's white school glue. Nothing fancy, I've got a toothpick here. We've got a little bit of glue on there. It's probably too much glue, so we're gonna wipe it off a little bit. Then we'll be able to go ahead and glue down that decal. And I'm assuming that should be good enough. I don't think we'll have to worry about it falling off or puckering up or anything like that. It should just go right down on top. Let's also make sure to line up all of those gauge clusters with the gauges themselves. There we go, right about there should do it. Then I'll give it a little bit of pressure, hold it just for a few moments, make sure it tacks up. I'll put it aside and we'll let it dry. Once that is done, we can come back, trim off the excess, and we'll have an instrument panel ready to go. And this is what our instrument panel looks like. As you can see, all the dials are visible, which is awesome. But we do have to go ahead and let this dry a little more thoroughly. So we're going to go ahead and queue up a time lapse again. And we're going to start doing some detail painting inside the cockpit. I want to go ahead and use a little bit of paint. I want to touch up a couple areas here and there. And uh, we'll just move on from there. We're going to start off first, of course, we do have to go ahead and make sure to install these side windows. So I'll do that right now before we go ahead and queue up a time lapse. I'm just going to use some basic Elmer's school glue. We're going to go ahead and glue up the other side, make sure that these are nicely secured, and then we'll go ahead and continue with our detail painting and we can get this thing fully assembled. <music> So this cockpit is actually turning out to be pretty sweet. And I like how it's all kind of coming together. So we've switched over to a little bit of dry brushing. I want to go ahead and use some Bleo aluminum. We're just going to dry brush the rudder pedals and the floor plate right below and in front of those rudder pedals. Now, if they're too stark, we can come back and we can hit it with a little bit of weathering powder. I know I do have some MIG powder that's a bit of a shiny, like a gunmetal powder. I can use that as well to kind of bring it down, but also give it a little bit of a shine as if it's polished from, you know, boots, maybe mud, something like that. I can also use a little bit of dry brushing on the inside of the cockpit itself. There's some wheels and gauges and whatnot I need to go ahead and just hit real quick with a fast dry brush to bring out a little more detail. I also took the liberty of off camera stringing in a little bit of easy line around one of the wheels. Maybe it's some sort of a trim tab, I'm not sure, but I went ahead and I threw some easy line on that. It's not very noticeable, so it's not that big of a deal, but it's nice to know that it's there. So we're going to start off here with some MIG gunmetal weathering powder. I'm going to just take my brush. I'm just going to go ahead and brush it in different areas and kind of burnish it down just a little bit. That'll add a tiny bit of weathering. It'll add a little bit of a shine to it, but it'll also add a darkening effect. Maybe perhaps mud or boots or grime, just general dirt would have been kind of ground in to the different areas. Also, it'll help to tone down some of the shinier parts of the metal such as the strap right behind the pilot's seat. Just a little bit here, just to kind of tone things down, but to give it a little bit of a sheen, I think we'll be ready to go. Also, we have to hit a little bit on the front of the instrument panel as well, just to make sure that that has a little bit of a used appearance. Then we're going to go ahead and rub a little bit of this in here on the actual floor plate for the cockpit. 
I want to go ahead and get that all nicely burnished out so it would appear that the pilot's been in and out of the cockpit and this is a well-used plane. The nice thing about Russian cockpits is they're very Spartan, but they do weather. And the pictures that I've seen show quite the same idea. So let's go ahead and get that all nicely squared away. I think we'll be ready to go ahead and start installing a couple of extra parts. Now let's go ahead and start installing a few more of these parts that need to be hooked up to the fuselage before we can go ahead and sandwich these two halves together. Now we're going to go ahead and jump in on the nose. Now the very front nose has a grill and some sort of an intake here. and We have that set aside here. We're going to go ahead and glue that down just to make sure that it's going to be nicely recessed in the proper location. So let's go ahead and test fit that. Looks like it's pretty decent. We need to sand it down just a tiny bit here. One of the things with the ICM kits is you do have to be very careful because sometimes they have very large injection molds and also very large attachment points to sprue. So when you go ahead and slice off some parts, you gotta be really careful and make sure that they're nicely cleaned up because that will affect actual overall fit. So I'll grab some extra thin Tamiya, my favorite glue of all time. And I think that actually looks pretty decent. I want to go ahead and kind of shift it around a little bit, make sure it's lined up. We might have to take a jeweler file to this a little bit later, but we'll worry about that after we start installing the fuselage together. Speaking of the fuselage, guys, let's go ahead and start here at the back of the aircraft. We're going to glue the two halves together, move all the way to the front nose, and then we'll see how we go. I think that's going to be the last major thing we're going to do today. At least that will give us a completed fuselage with internal cockpit all ready to go. We do have to worry also though about the actual trunking and the intake for the oil cooler and we're going to have to worry about the wing attachment point and the top of the cowling. All of that needs to be done as well. So we're just going to go ahead and finish off here with the fuselage, glue everything together and then next episode we can come back, we can start placing different parts in like the different vents, the actual oil cooler itself and then of course the wings and all that good stuff. So I'm actually very pleased at least so far but I haven't done any fit here on the wings or anything like that. So I don't know how this is all going to go down, but we're just going to keep pushing forward and seeing how we do. One of the nice things we are going to do here is we're going to use some rubber bands and we are going to rubber band the fuselage together so that we can maintain a constant pressure on that seam. The thing with the lags is they're mostly made of wood or a different composite type of wood, but it's going to be a very smooth exterior, not going to have a lot of panel lines. So we're going to have to go ahead and make sure that we can erase the seam on the top here. Any prominent seams have got to go. I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of super glue here on the very front of this seam. I want to make sure that that is going to be able to be fared over. And I think some super glue is going to help to go ahead and fill that gap. Even as careful as I was trying to go ahead and fit the actual headrest and the armor plating up inside with the cockpit, it's still not exactly perfect and it does bulge just a little bit. But it's so minimal. I can go ahead and close that gap off. That super glue is going to help to fare it over and also fill up that gap. Moving right along here to the front nose, everybody, we're going to go ahead and glue together the right and left sides. I'm not going to worry too much about the seam here because we are going to be covering this with our cowling. Now, I don't think we're going to install the cowling today. We're going to wait till maybe next episode. Today, we just want to go ahead and clean up whatever seams we can and glue these together so that we have a good foundation to go ahead in the next episode, maybe try to test fit the cowling and see how we stack up. I do want to go ahead and test fit the wing joint, though. I know Joe's having a heck of a time with his wing joint. I talked with him a little offline here, just a little bit about it. I know he's having a really difficult time. He'll pull it through for sure, but I want to check and see how mine looks. I can already see there's going to be a couple of areas that we're going to need to contend with. So I think mine's a little less warped than Joe's, but still we've got some major filling we're going to have to do on that wing root. Also, I think the wings were a little bit short shot in terms of material because there's a little bit of a triangle on the back of those wing roots that need to be filled. But all in good time, guys. We're going to go ahead and call it quits for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next we meet, make sure to get out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. Head over to Joe's channel, check out his lag. It's looking fantastic. And we will see you all back here next week for another episode of Ben Builds with Joe. Until then, guys, take care and we'll see you soon.